between the Netflix version of She's Gotta Have It, Black Klansman, and now Five Bloods, Spike Lee absolutely proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's hit an apex in an already astounding career. It goes like this. Four black Vietnam vets reunite in modern day Vietnam to recover the remains of their squad leader, Storm and Norman, and to retrieve the gold they buried in the jungle long ago. We open with a montage. It includes Muhammad Ali's rejection of the draft, Martin Luther King's outright rejection of the war and his outspoken language about it, and then his subsequent murder, but also the violent videos and images that affected the anti-war sentiment of the time and remain difficult to comprehend. Black men were disproportionately sent to Vietnam, where they made just 12% of the US population, but over 30% of the armed forces. The psyches of our four vets are deeply affected by their experience. Sent to war as heroes, only to return as just another black man. One of them, Paul, played by Spike alumni Delroy Lindo, who turns in an academy-worthy performance bar none. In the film, he's a Trump supporter, and he wears a Make America Great Again hat for much of the film. He's haunted by the spirit of his squad leader, Storm and Norman, played by Chadwick Boseman, and he suffers from PTSD and terrible nightmares. He harbors deep resentment toward the Vietnamese people and finds it triggering just to be back there in the jungle. The other men are not without their demons, whether it's crippling debt or opioid addiction, the cost of which includes generational trauma. As they bow through the jungle of their past, these traumas rise to the surface and threaten to tear them all apart. Special attention is also given to the Vietnamese experience and the cost of the war on modern day Vietnam. One of my favorite sequences involves a Viet Cong radio broadcast where a woman sympathizes with the black soldiers while announcing the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King. She understands how they are fighting the white man's war. Director of photography Newton Thomas Siegel gives Spike one of his most beautiful films ever and frequent collaborator and jazz artist Terrence Blanchard delivers a moving score that carries the film, using soul cuts of Marvin Gaye, but also deeply moving symphonies, which include the cultural sounds of Vietnam. At some point when I was watching, I remembered the scene from school days where the college students had a confrontation with some old men. And I was finding it interesting how that now that Spike is older, those college students have grown into those old men. And that's where this movie focuses. One of the things that makes Spike so great is we can always trust him to tell us where he's at at that moment in time. <laughs> 